It's a very interesting world. Uh, video game, uh, music in video games is similar in structure to music in feature films, in that a majority of the music that you'll find in both video games and feature films are done by composers where there's an original score. Because it's wall-to-wall -wall music, and it would be to some degree difficult to score that just with library music. Although it can be done, we have had shows that are just scored with library music. In fact, on television, it happens all the time. It's rare in feature films, and it's rare in video games. And uh, what, where our music is used in those venues is as fill-in music, where there's um, the score doesn't cover a certain thing, the composer doesn't write that way, or. It's a kind of music. It's not necessary to do. For example, you're walk, you're in Paris in a scene in a movie, and there's a club scene where somebody is singing in a style reminiscent of Edith Piaf. Uh, you're not going to go and license the Edith Piaf song and spend fifty thousand dollars or whatever it is. You're certainly not going to go and hire a French band and find a singer and record it all, you know, for the fifteen seconds that you need that music. You're going to come to us. Because we've already hired the band, we've already found the singer, we've already recorded it, and it's sitting in the library for a relatively inexpensive price. So for five hundred dollars instead of fifty thousand or ten thousand or whatever, you totally satisfy your needs. So we we license thousands and thousands of songs into uh, into feature films. In the video game world, it's the same thing. Uh, and some, uh, although I would say that in video games, actually, we have uh, per game we have many more songs than we do in. Uh, um, feature films because video, video games are nonlinear and they branch and so depending on where you may end up in a part of the video game uh, where a certain type of song is needed but you're only going to be in there for a few seconds and if the composer were going to write every single second for every single part of the video game it would uh, be very expensive and take a long time and he'd have to write many many different styles so again if the uh, if the video game takes you to that French club then you just license a few seconds from us um, and we also we do thousands of songs into video games. We work with all of the major developers and publishers. Um, we had so a couple of interesting ones recently. We were uh, we have I don't know I forget exactly how many songs 40 50 songs in the the Godfather video game that was put out by Electronic Arts. Uh, then there was another game put out by Midway uh, L.A. Blitz where. Uh, they had our logo all over the place. It's the cars driving through Los Angeles, and on all the different buildings, they put the APM logo up, uh, which is really fun. And then there was another game, which I forget which one it is, where we had a, um, it was a, a radio station, or a series of radio stations. So the, I think like you're in the car, and you can click the, in the game, you can click on the different radio stations. All of the music in all those radio stations was ours. So there are a lot of really interesting uses that happen in video games. We happen to work very closely with the video game business. We, ha we represent the Electronic Arts uh, catalog. So all of the music that Electronic Arts has produced for its video games that they own and control, we've cut up for them and put into a library format where we have a, a main version, we have a version often that's a, like an underscore version, and then we have cut downs, 30 and 60 seconds, that are useful for commercials. <clears throat> and we named them and described them and registered them and did all of the work and organized them into CDs and put them online. And so somebody can license uh, music from the Harry Potter games, Lord of the Rings games, The Sims, Command and Conquer, and the, the Madden games, things like that from Electronic Arts. We also have another library called Endgame where we actually went out and uh, worked out deals with the top 20, 25 video game composers in the world and got their music into music that they own, not necessarily in a game, and it's not necessarily game music. It's just that they're doing really interesting things. So we went out and we uh, got music that they own that was sitting on the shelf and had them edit it and organize it, and I have an executive producer overseeing that project. And we've assembled it into a, into a nice library of music. And it's really, really great stuff. We have about 10 CDs now so far. No, we don't take any fee. You just split the... We just split the revenues that we receive. Mm-hmm.